everybody. Thanks for joining me. I've been asked a few times to give an update on Seritage Growth Properties, ticker symbol SRG, which is a company I covered a lot before the COVID pandemic, and it's kind of fallen off the radar since. Uh, there's some good reasons why it's fallen off the radar. But before we dive in, please take a minute and click subscribe to my channel and check out the message you see on your screen. The link is fool.com slash Frankel, and you can get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. It's a great way to support this work I'm doing on YouTube. Again, fool.com slash Frankel. So Seritage Growth Properties, if you're not familiar, they were a real estate investment trust. They're no longer classified as one, but they were a real estate investment trust, and they were formed for a very specific and unique purpose. They owned, a, they were spun off from Sears you know, the big retailer, and they were specifically intended to take a bunch of old Sears properties and gradually redevelop them into premier modern retail and mixed use assets. The idea was that when they were built, most Sears were built in pretty desirable locations. A lot of them are in kind of central locations where it's not that there is just isn't that much land anymore. Um, so it's a really unique portfolio of properties. And if they could successfully do it, then it would there could be a lot of money to be made. And a lot of people really believed in the idea, myself included. Warren Buffett was actually Saratage's biggest shareholder personally, not just not Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio, but personally owned a little more than 5% of the company. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, by the way, was Saratage's lender, so they believed in the business. Um, they're still Saratage's creditor. Um, but then the COVID pandemic hit. The numbers were looking great before the pandemic. Um, Berkshire Hathaway set a target of $200 million in non-Sears rental income in signed leases per year from Saratage in order to access a credit line that they really needed to take the business to the next level. At the end of 2019, they were at they were over $180 million. So they were 90% of the way to where they needed to be. Then the COVID pandemic hit and things really just derailed from there. So Seritage was never profitable. That was by design. You know, when you have a, pro a portfolio of vacant and Sears properties and the whole goal is to develop them, there isn't a ton of money coming in. So it required on strong leasing activity or relied on strong leasing activity to fund its renovations without losing too much money. And it wasn't profitable, but there wasn't a lot of wiggle room in the numbers, meaning that if that the rental income stream dried up, they wouldn't have money to complete renovations and things would just kind of unwind. And that's what happened with the pandemic. Um, not only did leasing activity grind to a halt, but even the current tenants in most cases couldn't pay rent because stores were uh, forced to shut down. Saratosh started losing a lot of money. And the one thing they didn't want to happen happened. They were forced to start selling off assets, many of which they didn't want to sell in order to pay its bills. And it just led to a cycle that kind of just spiraled out of control where the company was just constantly playing catch up. Um, just to kind of put some numbers into it, I mentioned that by the end of 2019, Saratage had $181 million in annual non-Sears rental income. By the end of 2021, that was down to $84 million, so less than half. Um, it, it started losing money kind of hand over fist. Seritage generated about a $34 million loss in 2019. In 2021, the loss was $106 million. So they got rid of the management team. They brought on new leadership who is doing a great job given the situation they inherited. And they eventually decided in 2022 that the best course of action was to start winding down the portfolio and, and just return whatever money's left after paying its creditors to investors. So They've been doing a good job of that so far. Seritage is, they had hundreds of properties. Now they're down to 32 properties with about 4 million square feet of rentable space. They sold 842, a little over $842 million in properties in 2023 alone. From that, they paid $670 million toward their debt. Again, Berkshire Hathaway is their creditor. There've been another 40, nine million dollars in proceeds in the first quarter of 2024 they also at the time of their earnings report had about 54 million dollars of properties under contract they were negotiating on about 15 million dollars more and have another set to go to auction with a reserve price of 10 million dollars so great progress 
They have almost $133 million of cash on hand. And all of the remaining properties, they said, are either have acquired or set up. They are listed for sale or are about to be. So they're making very good progress. They've wound down much of their portfolio. The term loan that used to be, uh, I think it was $1.6 billion to start with, is now $330 million because of how much they've paid down. And one of the real interesting things they did in their most recent report, which you can see on your screen, is that they gave valuation estimates for the rest of their properties. When it comes to real estate stocks, the asset value that you see on the company's balance sheet doesn't always accurately reflect the the sales price they can get. That's it. They paid for it minus any accumulated depreciation. It could not be the price of the current market value of the properties. So Saratage provided a nice estimate of all of their properties. Uh, so you can see that they have a lot of assets. Some of them are very valuable. And just let's do a quick back of the napkin calculation on how much intrinsic value remains in this portfolio. So using the midpoints of their estimates on the list that you just saw on your screen, you get about $1.09 billion of, pro- of expected proceeds from their properties that they still have. That does not include what's already under contract. So $1.09 billion, based on the midpoints of their estimates, we can be optimistic if we want, but let's be realistic. So that's the midpoints of their estimates. Between under contract negotiating and auction properties, that adds another $78.8 million of expected proceeds. Add to that the $132.6 million of cash that Saratage Saratage has on its balance sheet. And you get, and subtract the the term loan of $330 million that I mentioned. Saratage also has preferred stock that would cost them $70 million to liquidate. Uh, It is 2.8 million shares at a $25 par value. Uh, So $70 million expense there. So add up all of the pro- the expected proceeds, subtract all of the debts and preferred stock, and you get an intrinsic value of a little over $901 million for the company. Now, Saratage's current market cap is under $600 million. So on a per share basis, our calculation gives an intrinsic value for the business of $16.02. In other words, if Saratage sold the rest of their properties today for the midpoint of that valuation range, paid off their debts, and distributed everything that was left to shareholders, they should get about $16 a share. As I'm recording this, the stock trades for about $9.21 per share. That implies a 74% upside if things go well and if things are you know completed in a timely manner. Now, to be fair, this sales process is probably going to drag out for a little while. That means Saratage is going to have to still pay some interest on its debt in the meantime, it's still paying to re, uh, to renovate and rehabilitate properties. So maybe a little bit less than the, the calculation we just did, but it should be a pretty close estimate to the actual you know, liquidation value that shareholders could get. So they're also paying dividends on that preferred stock that I mentioned in the meantime. They're not paying common stock dividends until the entire term loan is paid off. They're going to start distributing money to shareholders. But... Um, they're currently paying preferred stock dividends, so that's another little expense in the meantime. So really, the, the question is, how long is it going to take? That's a big X factor here. And in the the most recent earnings report, and we'll end on this, they actually threw shareholders quite a curveball. Um, their CEO said that they might not end up completely winding down. The quote is, we have a line of sight into a significantly more simplified, simplified portfolio of primarily premier development sites in prime markets. This, along with our low run rate corporate overhead and significant tax losses, may position the company for potential strategic transactions as an alternative to continuing our plan of sale. Now, translating that into one sentence of simple English, that means that instead of continuing to sell off the assets one at a time, one at a time, Saratage could get the the portfolio to the point potentially where it might just be more attractive to sell the entire company to somebody else. You know, another REIT might buy a portfolio of a few premier real estate assets, but doesn't want a bunch of abandoned old Sears properties is essentially what that means. So it's not guaranteed that the the sale plan will continue as as, uh, expected, but there is a lot of embedded value in this stock. The question is, how quickly will Saratage be able to realize it? If it happens within the next two years, whether it is from a, a wind down of all the assets 
or from a sale of the entire company. Um, shareholders who take a chance on this could be handsomely rewarded. So not a low risk stock by any means, but one that if you're looking for kind of just a deep value play that could you know, potentially be a pretty quick win, uh, Seritage could be one to put on your radar. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment, so I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than four times, so go to fool.com slash Frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 650% as of April 16th, 2024, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 148% as of April 16th, 2024.